Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about the standard template library. This time we're going to be talking about standard pair. And the reason we're going to talk about this is we're going to move on to some more standard template library data structures, things like maps that are key value pairs. So it's important just to understand what a key value pair is if you haven't seen this, and otherwise to see standard pair which was added in C++11. Now, standard pair is also a specialization of something known as a tuple, but in this case with a pair, you just have, well, two fields, a key and a value, or at least that's how it's typically used in this context and how we'll see it when we go to study map and unordered map upcoming in the series. So make sure you subscribe for that. Otherwise, let's just go ahead and look at CPP reference and understand pair. So I'm going to go ahead and just take you, we've been working with the containers in the previous lessons if you've been following along, but we're going to go ahead and move to the general utilities library, just taking a brief detour here and talk about pair. So again, looking at this, it's something that was added in C++11. And as I mentioned, it's related to something else known as a tuple here, which we'll cover when appropriate in this series. So the basic idea of a pair as shown here, is it's a templated data structure with two fields, the first field and the second field. And that's the sort of notation that you're going to see exposed inside of a map, which might make use of a std pair, for instance. So with that said, let's just go ahead and look at some of the different things we can do with a pair so we understand it. Now, we've got some things like swap, which we're going to cover a little bit more later with the algorithms, but we've also got make pair, get, for instance, and by using a pair, you get all of the different types of operators that are available here. Namely, we've got something known the spaceship operator, which we haven't talked about here quite yet, so we'll have to also get to that. But let's just go ahead and look at a basic use case of pair and some examples here. So again, in order to get started with a pair, I'm going to go ahead and include this time the utility header here. So again, if I scroll up to pair, I'll find that here. That's where this is defined. There's no, uh, you know, reason to include pair. That's just what it is. And you might be asking yourself, why, in fact, would you just create this sort of data structure? Uh, or why wouldn't you just create this data structure? I mean, really what it is, and it's useful to just kind of take a look at this, is it's a template. And again, you might just want to create this with, you know, two parameters here, type name, uh, whatever the first field is, type name, whatever the second field is. And then you could go ahead and just create a struct exposing out, you know, my pair with whatever the first type is, which is the key and the second type that you specify, which is the value here. OK, so that's something that you certainly could do. Um, but again, since we've got this implemented in the standard template library, um, it is nice to have some of these functions like git, for instance, and make pair, which I'll show you that are just kind of useful and might be the tool that you need. And again, it's sort of the interface that's exposed in map and unordered map. Um, not necessarily that it's implemented that way, but again, that's what we want to see here. But again, just getting this idea here of a key, which we look something up and the value. So again, if we take a look at some data structure that we have, uh, what this is going to mean, let's say we have an array and we've looked at, you know, some of these different data structures here. Usually you might have something like a key stored here and then the actual value is what we want here. Now, if we're looking at something with an array, the key is usually the index into this data structure. So zero, one, two, three, etc. for array. And then the value is the type that's actually stored. So for instance, if I have an array, uh, let's just call this uh, int data. And uh, well, let's actually make this a little bit more interesting here. Let's go ahead and make it a uh, string here. And I'll call it, you know, data. And we'll know we'll have eight uh, values. So again, this is our key. And the value that is stored is the string. OK, just to be explicit about what's going on. So that's usually how you'd use a, a pair, for instance. Now, again, what I mean by that is a key value uh, pair here. So this is how we identify something. And this is how we look something up. But a pair is, again, tightly connecting in these two uh, ideas or rather these two fields here. So I have the key here at line six and the value here uh, at line seven. And we can see that they're part of the same exact structure. So let's just go ahead and start playing around with this a little bit uh, with C++'s standard pair here. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is open up some of those examples here. 
Uh, and let's just go ahead and uh, do one here. So I want a standard pair. And I need to specify what the key and the value are. So maybe the key is going to be, uh, well, let's make the key an integer. And let's make the value a uh, string here. Okay, and we'll sort of do something like um, students, for instance. So let's just go ahead and say, uh, or actually, let's just have one student because this is just one pair for now. So uh, for this, I could go ahead and set my student. Uh, and well, how do I set this first field here? A uh, couple of different ways here. And let's actually see what we've got here uh, for our actual uh, constructor. Uh, one way is to actually initialize our actual pair here. And let's just go ahead and do that here. Let's say, you know, student uh, ID one, and I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, myself here. And because I'm using string, let's go ahead and include uh, the string uh, header there. OK, and then if I want to access these fields here, I'll access student dot first. And then student uh, dot second here. OK, so again, let's go ahead and uh, see uh, a few examples here. Again, from CPP reference here, uh, initializing our pair here, or this one would be uh, uninitialized. Here we are actually initializing it with the two fields and explicitly with the template. And that's what we have recreated here as well. And then we want to actually access our fields. So let's go ahead and run this example uh, just so we can see how this works. And there we are, one and then Mike. So we could certainly expand this example out here. And let's go ahead and generalize this idea of what a student is. So we could use uh, something that we've learned about before, maybe something like a type def, or again, just to review some of the things that we've learned, or if you haven't seen in the lessons here, let's use using here. Uh, we could actually make that the scope. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a global uh, scope here. Uh, and what I want to do is just create our student here. And I'm going to sort of label this as a type here. So sometimes you might see underscore T uh, depends on the convention or, you know, if you want to do that. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that here. And let's just say a student is a pair with an ID and their name here. OK, uh, so we could go ahead and now uh, do something maybe more interesting here. Like, let's go ahead and create a for loop here. And I'm going to say, well, I is less than. Um, well, actually, let's let's go ahead and just create a vector of my student T's now, and I could call this students. And now let's go ahead and uh, in a loop here, where I equals zero, I less than five, we will go ahead and uh, create a bunch of students here. We're just going to name them all uh, Mike for now, uh, just to make this easy, and we'll index uh, from zero. And then let's go ahead and with our vector, again, practicing some of the things that we've learned before. Uh, so this is students. Let's push back our student. And we could actually get a little bit more efficient with our vector and maybe in place this. So we just create it in place rather than making a copy. But again, those are just things I want to mention. Um, and then you can make them uh, more efficient as needed here. OK, so let's go ahead and make sure that we include vector and just focus on this example. And let's go ahead and see if this much works. So let me go ahead and clear here. Do a quick check for errors, and I think it looks good overall. So I'll go ahead and compile it, um, and you know it appears to run here. So now let's just go ahead and say um, for uh, each of our elements here in our students vector, let's go ahead and print them out. So I'll go ahead and do see out here, and again our elements are pairs. So we'll grab the first one, put a comma here. And let's go ahead and then grab our second uh, field here and then print them out here. All right. And we can see zero, one, two, three, four, Mike here. Now, I think the interesting part of this example is perhaps uh, this latter part here, which is showing again that from our data structure, we're returning a pair. And again, that's how you're probably going to see it again when we move on in the next lesson. So make sure you subscribe uh, when we talk about the map. But this idea of being able to get an element back from some collection that is a pair, because that's what's going to end up happening when you query um, in a map to see if some element exists. You'll want to find that key and oftentimes return that value. So access things with the first or second field here. OK, so that's the basic idea. We've practice some other concepts here, 
with using here. So we have an alias to easily create these pairs. And you'll see this um, on occasion or in your code. Again, the nice thing is um, we can actually, um, let me be a little bit better here and put this in our scope here, <laughs> just so it's not uh, exposed everywhere if it doesn't need to be. So again, that's you know nice thing you can do there with using or your type defs. Again, uh, you can do these things here. Uh, and we are able to store a pair here. Now, I do want to show you a few other things that I think will be neat with pairs. Um, for instance, if we go ahead and look back at some of the other um, uh, functions available, or non-member functions, rather, we have this make pair uh, function here. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what this does. And this is, again, taking us back to some of the things that we've learned previously with unique pointers, where we had make unique and make shared. So you see this uh, show up every once in a while. Uh, so again, what is... Uh, make pair. Well, it creates a pair uh, and it can deduce the uh, type from the argument. So this is kind of nice if you use it with auto. Uh, so I'm going to kind of follow the example that they have here in CPP reference here. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to, um, I could get quite uh, flexible here. And let's just go ahead and say auto uh, new pair. And what we want to do here is if we use make pair, uh, we can just deduce the types here. Now, again, you might want to be careful, you know, depending on the actual types you're using, if you really need unsigned versus signed types, for instance, with integers, again, you might want to, um, you know, explicitly uh, label these things. So for instance, if I put 100L to make this a long here, uh, and then 10.0F uh, for a float, um, it should be able to uh, deduce uh, those types. Okay, uh, so let's just go ahead and build this just to show you that it works here and we have our new pair. Now the other cool thing um, that is shown in this example, and I'll just highlight it here, is if you want to make a new pair, and we haven't talked about uh, standard ref here, uh, but you can build it from the reference here, so it's got the type there, um, which is kind of clear, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, make this example uh, kind of interesting. Again, we'll kind of mirror the CPP reference one because I think it's uh, nice here. Let's just go ahead and create an integer. Uh, or actually, let's create a long uh, value equals 100L. Okay, just to explicitly make it a long here. Let's put in that value. Or let's actually, um, let's do the uh, std ref here from the uh, value here. And then what I can do is, of course, since I am uh, going to modify the value, 150, and I'll match the type here, and then let's go ahead and write out the pairs first value here. And since it's accessing whatever this first value is, uh, value by reference, um, it should be updated rather than just constructing uh, make pair uh, from a copy. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that here. Um, oops, and I need to uh, include... I think I need to include functional here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that here. Let's check out ref quickly. Yeah, in functional. And we will get to that uh, eventually in this series. Some of the different cool things we could do here. Functional. All right. So then we should be all set there. And that's kind of neat here. So we do see 150 here. So that's just kind of a nice, uh, neat thing you could do with uh, some of your pairs if you are using this as a uh, explicit data structure. Again, just to show you what it'll do uh, without that, if I put in value here, uh, right, it's still going to be 100 here. So again, uh, depending on what you need to do, I just thought that was a nice uh, example. Uh, there are a few other neat things you can do with pairs as far as their creation uh, with the git uh, member function here. Um, so typically, again, if you want to access pairs, you can just use uh, dot first or dot second to actually do that access. Um, let's actually, uh, for this one here, let's just access our pair, new pair here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here, uh, let me use standard get here. Um, and this time I'm going to use the uh, templated field here, zero here. And then let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, what pair we want to look for. Well, new pair is what we're looking at here. And let's just go ahead and see what that uh, value is. Okay, it should be 100 since it took away the reference, and it is here. Uh, now, what's kind of neat here is I can also, uh, if I just pass in float here, this time it's giving me 10 here. And it's able to deduce, as long as these are different fields here, it's able to pick out the right one. So it can pick out the right type from the pair, uh, which is kind of neat.
So I think that's a nice sort of uh, deduction uh, that you could get um, with this pair. Now, again, this is something new um, in uh, C++, let's see, I believe. Uh, 11 is when it was added here and you might be asking yourself why to actually um, use git here with a pair probably not the use case but with something like a tuple for instance you get the advantage of a compile time check if you have you know more fields here like two or three or four or five fields here or if you just want to see if you don't know how that type was created um, it could do a little bit of inference for you so that's sort of the use case for it um, most of the times you're probably just going to be using dot first and dot second but again just wanted to show you that there uh, is available for pair and in case you run into some of these things uh, a little bit later and again we're going to talk more about some of these things like uh, stood reference and so on um, let's go ahead and just leave that here in the example here as we review um, so I think that's about it with what I want to talk about with uh, pair for now. So just doing a quick little refresh on what we have achieved here. Again, a pair is something that you're going to see come up with map. That's why I wanted to cover it first here. It's part of the utility header, which has a bunch of useful other data structures. Um, some of these data structures, pairs might actually be used in the C++ or could be used in the actual implementation. So you could think of a uh, map perhaps being implemented in some sort of way. In reality, there's some sort of node structure encapsulating this. Uh, again, we'll do a little bit deeper dive when we get into map. Um, very likely what you might want to do if you're using lots of types, you know, don't forget about the other stuff that we've been learning in this series, things like using and so on. Uh, but the, here's sort of the use case where you have a collection of things and then usually you end up needing to grab a pair or return a pair, a key and a value, and you do that with first and second. And then of course we got into some interesting things with make pair, uh, which could do a nice job with uh, deducing the actual types. And you can even do things like, you know, referring to some other variable that exists again, as you're creating your pair, which might be useful. And then finally there was git again, probably more useful for something like a tuple, but again, wanna show you that it's available for pair where you could just return but based off the template parameter using an integer zero or one for the index or actually the type to check if it is there. All right, folks, so with that said, if you found this useful, this lesson will be also available on the free course playlist if you want to follow along and track your progress there as always. And as always, thank you again for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.